were on. Oh, but there's nothing like it. Now, people say to me, Bruce, what were the best days of your life? Musically, the best days of my life were playing with, no one plays one here, Gary Moore, and the greatest skitter of all time. We were only a three piece, and many of fellow and Bernard Chambers was in the original band. But it was really Gary, Noel, and myself. When we had hair. Well, people say to me, no, what do you miss most? Yeah, what do you miss most about the band? The hair is what I miss now. But this is Noel here, and he's the main man. So, Noel, we met long before we were musicians. Is that right? That's right, Brendan. We were, uh, at the time, you were Kurt and Mara next door, she was my next door now. <laughs> so I was saying, how can I impress this bloke so we can get together? Yeah. So I used to leave the window open. That's remember, right. I played the accordion. That's right. <laughs> I remember it well, though. And then I played the clarinet, do you remember? Yeah. Ackerville. Do, 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 do. I couldn't believe it now. And uh, Stranger on the Shore. I remember it this thing. Come up to the face by Rory, you live in the one room. But anyway, you got the message. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then... What happened after that now? Oh Lord, God, I used to uh, go around and see you playing with the Uptown Band, yeah. with Mojo, yeah. Desi Reynolds, That's right. <laughs> Desi Reynolds, and was Brenny Bernas there as well? Brenny, Brenny Bernas, and, and Mojo, yourself. Mojo, Mojo, yeah. Mojo oh, the, the wild man of the organ, that's right. That's when we used to stab it to death with noise. You know, they, they need, and Emerson Lake and Parma, he had his own knife though. Yeah. <laughs> and Desi, Desi was a phenomenal drummer, fantastic. I went and got a few lessons off Desi trying to pick his brains, how to learn how to play, play like he did. Yeah. It was great. And then, uh, then we just got together, really, basically. Yeah, yourself, that's myself, that's Brandon that's Chambers. That's right. And Phil. Phil. And I mean, those, Ted and myself. Got, we got it going, then we, you came down, then Bernard came down, then we auditioned Philip. That's right. Yeah, brought him up for an audition. And, and it was, hey Joe. And <laughs> Benny Shaver says to me, called me up says, I think I can sing it better. <laughs> you know, we've done the hey Joe. <laughs> that was that. No, Philip was very shy then, bro. He was yeah. very shy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they were fantastic. And then, we done, I remember doing a gig up in the, do you remember up in the Adelaide Road? Yeah. What was it called? The Adelaide Hall. There's a name for the hall, but I can't remember. And we had Ashtar. Do you remember Ashtar? With the yeah, lights? The, the liquid lights. The, the yeah. first in the country ever to have all these... We were the first psych early psychedelic Psychedelic lights, lights that's right. I mean, psychedelic. And funny enough, we played at Liberty Hall the night my dad died. That's right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's rock and roll, though. But yeah. we were the first with the lights. And then we done a gig with Gary myself and yourself on the television and unfortunately Phyllis Hall or Phyllis McCarthy as he's known now she pumped the balloon up the pillow and he was singing Badly Off Key playing with the balloon at the that's same right. time. That's right, that's right. Oh, so there was war about that, do you remember? Well we let him go out as more of that. Yeah, but then I don't think we realised that he had a fellow, put out a fellow had a problem with his throat, his tonsils were. Yeah. So I think you persuaded him to go to England for an operation yeah, yeah, he's to go and get a fix, and he never never looked back after that. But when he came back up, you know, I basically said after him, I was looking at the news year, but when he when he was away, the tree was so great. <laughs> 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 and he wanted to you know, be the Irish cream or the Irish Jimmy Hendrix, so when he came back. Yeah, but I think there was a little more to it than that, Brian. Like, oh, I mean, you don't, you sort of, you say, you say, I don't think that's really the way it was. Like, I think at that time, you're just seeing a little further down the road than the rest of us did. I think you knew that Philo wanted to do his own thing, really. Yeah, he had his you, own you knew that, didn't yeah. you? And that the only way to encourage him to do his own thing was to actually get him to fly the coop. So yeah. you gave him your guitar, yeah, that's right. you showed him a few things, and you sent him on his way. I mean, that was the thing to do. Look where he, look what he achieved after that. Yeah. So, I mean, I know now and then you sort of give yourself a bit of a knock and, for, and you, you, you know, you're laughing <laughs> out saying you fired him, but there was a little more to it. Well, yes. You know, do you know? So. Yeah. Let's just get yeah. that straight. Well, he yeah. had a bit more to learn at the time. I mean, you know, he, yeah. he, had, to be, he had to become more of a, of a musician. He did, and he did. He did, yeah. He worked very hard at it. He did, but we were, at that point, we were ready to move to the next. Do something else, yeah. yeah. He, had to, he had to do whatever he had to do. Yeah. And then, next thing you know, Gary and myself, we had, we had a deal with CBS, which turned out to be the worst deal of all time. That's right, yeah. half percent between the three of us. That's right. <laughs> And it took, it took a day to make the first album, 24 hours to make the second album, and it's only about the third album. But they reckon they never recouped their outlay on this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, four days to make three albums. We haven't, we still haven't made the money back. So we never got a penny up in CBS. Yeah. Then, Not even an advance. Nothing. Nothing. No, no, and no. a half percent in between three of us. Yeah. 
God, we were so young and naive, weren't we? Yeah, but we loved it. But we, you know, it was we fantastic. We were in it for the right reasons. We yeah. weren't thinking of, of our bank balance. It was no. all about just playing music. And yeah. it was like I was talking to a friend of mine there, like Eamon. He comes to Ryan's and he was just saying, he says, I remember seeing Skid Row, he says, when you started, he says, and I suddenly realised that there was another life out there <laughs> rather than the life that we lived in Dublin, that yeah. there was another whole thing to it. Yeah. You know, and for us it was, Brandon, for me, like, it was a great escape. But none of us knew what To us, America could have been the millionaire, you know, you know, sometimes you're gone to America and say, and the thing was, we yeah. did get to America. <laughs> and chances yes, when we got off the plane, you were arrested. Do <laughs> you remember that in your passport? Confiscated. Oh the most wanted. You had the same name as the most wanted man in America.